Hello my fellow gangsters. So, Shoham Iriz, I don't know if I said your name right, asks how blah blah blah. How to make the cube move but when it hits a wall it won't pass through the, through it but would collide. It's basically asking like how to make things collide. Because I did a different tutorial where you move the cube around and it would like, it will just translate right through the wall. So we're gonna do, make it so that it hits the wall, we'll make it so that it bounces off the wall, we'll make it so that like when it hits a wall you can detect what you're hitting and then trigger it to do some other code, whatever you want. So like, you could like, maybe if it was a bullet and it hit somebody in the face, you could like trigger like, explode their face or something, so. Just a bunch of collision detection-y stuff. So the first thing I'll do is go to the hierarchy and go create 3D object sphere. And I'm going to name it ball. And I'm gonna put its position Y to 2.5 and everything else is the zero. And I'm gonna go to my camera, put that at 2.5 in the Y, and minus five in the Z. So now our camera's looking at this ball. And I'm gonna go create, so project create material, just call that ball and drag that onto the ball in the hierarchy window. So it's on here and inside the ball material I'm going to make it like super metallic, so metallic one and smoothness one. So now it's all shiny and pretty. I'm just going to I'm going to delete I'm going to right click and delete the directional light and go to window lighting and Ambient intensity, I'm going to bring that down to zero. And then on the ball, with the ball selected, I'm going to go add component, rendering, light. So now we've got a light on the ball. Now we've got to make a room full of cubes. So let's go create 3D object cube. And I'm going to call this cube floor. And its position is just zero, zero, zero. I'm going to make the scale 10, 1, 10. Then I'm going to right click, duplicate, call this one ceiling. And I'm going to move this up to 5 in the Y. Then I'm going to go create 3D object cube, call this wall, wall 1, and make its position 0. 2.5 and 4.5 and make it scale 8, 4, 1 and then duplicate this wall and call it wall 2 and make wall 2 have a Z that's negative 4.5 and then we'll create another 3D object, cube, call it wall 3, and make wall 3's position minus uh, 4.5, 2.5, and 0, and make wall 3's scale 1, 4, 10. And then duplicate that, call it wall 4, and on wall 4 go x is 4.5 alright so now we got a room and we got some walls and we got a ball that we can move in so first we'll do it kinda of the wrong way it's the simple way that doesn't that just goes straight through the walls and then we'll fix it and make it so it collides with the walls so we're going to need a script so project create c sharp script i'm just going to call it ball and drag the script onto the ball and double click the script so we're going to need a public float move speed and say that equals 10f by default so that's how fast the ball is going to move 
And then inside of update down here, we're going to detect what we're pressing. So float input x equals input dot get axis horizontal. So we're pressing left and right. And then to move the ball forward and back, we'll duplicate that, but go uh, input z is a vertical. And then we'll go float move x equals input x, how much we're pressing left and right, multiplied by move speed that we made at the top, how fast it is, times time dot delta time. And duplicate that. Call it move z and input z. So we're detecting pressing left and right and forward and back. And we're multiplying how fast he's going to move. And then let's tell the ball to move. So we go transform dot translate x, y, z. So move x, zero up and down, move z. So we detected what we're pressing and how fast we're moving, and then we pass it into this translate thing that moves the ball around. So save that. And so this is how you can just move, but it goes through the wall, and that sucks. So it's just moving around, but there's no collision, because for collision, we need a rigid body. So instead of doing this crappy thing, we're going to go to the ball, and on the inspector, go add component physics rigid body, and turn off gravity for now. And then in the code, we're going to access this rigid body and move it with the rigid body instead of just moving its position around. So if you go back in here, you can go, instead of translate, we'll go, well, first we'll, we have to detect the rigid body. So up top here, we go private rigid body, our body. And then in the start, we'll say our body equals get component, get that rigid body on the game object that we added rigid body. So now our body equals that, that rigid body that we attached. And then instead of doing transform, we'll do our body dot add force. And just put the same thing inside of it. So instead of translating the position, we're going to like push the rigid body around. So play that. And now he's moving really slowly because it's a bit different. So on the ball, we had that public function where it's move speed. So we can make that like 200. And now it moves a bit faster. When you hit the wall, it stops. Because it hits the collider. So I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to set move speed to 200, because that was the number I like. And then, so let's make it so that it bounces when it hits the wall. So you can do different kinds of behaviors when, when the colliders hit things. So let's go create physics material. And I'm just going to call it ball. And then on the ball here, we have that sphere collider. And it has a material, physics material, right here. So let's drag that ball physics material onto the collider of the ball and then select the ball physics material and it has different things like friction so if it was like dragging against the ground you could make it move like ice if there was no friction all these different things so the bounciness set that to one which is the highest number for bounciness and then on bounce combine I'm gonna do maximum so it's combining 
how bouncy the wall is with how bouncy the ball is. And we're just taking like the highest number to make it really bouncy. And that's it. Now it should bounce off the walls. So that's cool. <clears throat> and then one other thing that you can do is detect when you're when there's a collision and then make some code happen like like a bullet hitting somebody in the face or something so what we're gonna do is when it hits a wall we'll detect what wall we hit and then make the ball change color so let's go back into the script and outside of the update we'll go on collision enter collision col oh yeah put void in front of it void on collision enter <clears throat> so this thing gets called every time there's a collision with the the ball collider so let's go print col dot collider dot name okay so col is the the collider like the other thing that we collided into and then we get the name of that game object so in the game so our ball our ball sphere collider it hits like wall one or whatever and it hits this collider <clears throat> and then we get the name of this game object in the so let's just play this okay so BAM! So it says wall 3, wall 4, wall 1, wall 2. So it knows when it's hitting those things. So if it was like somebody's face, then you can be like, kill that person, explode their face. So we're going to just change the color. So to change the color, we need to know, <clears throat> we're going to go into this mesh renderer. And then inside here it has materials, and there's this ball material. So we're going to change the color of the ball material through the renderer. So let's go back into the game, I mean into the code, and detect. So let's go private renderer. I guess we'll just call it rend. And then say rend equals get component. Renderer, render, renderer. Uh, so we'll get that renderer thing, and then let's detect which wall we're hitting. So we'll go if col dot collider dot name is equal to wall one, then rend a renderer dot material dot color equals equals color color dot blue and then if it hits a different wall we'll go else if it hits wall two color red else if it hits wall 3 make the balls color green and if it hits wall 4 yellow so when you type in color it kinda auto fills all the, the default built-in things that you could put but let's save that and play it. Bam! Green, yellow, blue, red. And then let's also change let's change the lights to colors too. So because remember on the ball we did we added this light and the light has a color right here 
but the light is a component of the ball, so we can go get component light and then change its color too in the code. So we can go private light, my light, and my light equals get component light. And then in here we can go my light dot color equals color dot blue. And same thing for these other ones. So red, green, and yellow. Save that. That's pretty cool. Christmas lights, yo. Bam. So there you go, collisions, detecting collisions, like what you hit, and then doing something when you hit them. Bam, and making them bouncy too. You could also, if you wanted to, you could turn the gravity back on. And then you could put in more inputs for like, making it go up with the same add force thing, right? Or down. Make it bounce around and stuff. Anyway, uh, I'll upload the whole project. Links below. Peace out, gangsters. <laughs>